Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video, another plug side chat. I was watching uh, Bjorn Nealand's channel the other day and he was demonstrating the cold weather charging of the Kona Electric and by extension, you know, sort of the Kia e-Niro or Niro EV and the uh, Jaguar I-Pace and some of the results charging in cold weather in Norway. You know, I know GM is also apparently planning a cold weather package or configuration for the Bolt EV. Uh, I don't know that I've heard a whole lot of details about what will be included in that. Uh, but, you know, it does bring up some interesting questions and considerations, right? So most of the automakers at this point are producing primarily permanent magnet motor uh, electric vehicles. And, you know, and that's for good reason, right? Under ideal circumstances, uh, permanent magnet motors are about as efficient as you can get, uh, far more efficient than the induction motors that were used in some of the older EVs and but with that, you know, comes a little bit of a cost because, you know, induction motors were a bit less efficient, but that inefficiency gave them, you know, excess heat or waste heat that you could use for other purposes, say like warming the battery or possibly even warming the cabinet. But if you're using permanent magnet motors, you're not necessarily going to see that same sort of waste heat. You might see it off of like the inverters or the controllers, but not necessarily off the motor. Either way, I do think it would be a good idea for these automakers to start looking for ways to loop excess heat that's coming off the power electronics. Essentially your motor controllers, your motor itself, none of them want really any heat at all in terms of their operating temperatures. They don't really care. So it really is just the batteries and the cabin that wants to maintain around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So the better the various automakers are to be able to scour and scavenge that heat, I think it's going to end up benefiting EV owners across the board. You know, because with winter, it really is a double whammy. You have a, a colder battery that outputs less energy, but also driving in conditions that your fuel efficiency or energy efficiency is going to go down. And now on top of it, you have to deal with lower charging speeds because your battery is cool or can't get enough heat. So I, I do think these are considerations that need to be made. And I know Jaguar are supposed to use a heat exchanger with their power electronics, but I don't know if that's to try to heat the battery as well but I think that's something that they should consider doing. And though I'm not a huge fan of heat pumps for warming the cabin, because I feel like that's almost just a waste of energy. By the time you really want to warm the cabin, you're gonna want a resistance heater anyway. But in the case of something like a battery, well, that's a well insulated area and maintaining that heat through a heat pump makes a lot more sense to me or at the very least like i said a heat exchanger you know adopt something similar to what tesla does where they do loop their power electronics through the battery and that should be something that's fairly easy to implement essentially your battery temperature drops below a certain point with outside temperatures below a certain point start cycling the coolant from inside the uh you know, motor controller through the battery rather than anywhere else, right? So uh, I, I think it's something, to, you know, there's some low hanging fruit that I think a lot of the automakers could start to take advantage of if they wanted to. And of course, I do think also it will be much easier as we see maybe more all wheel drive platforms implemented where a secondary induction motor can essentially also act as a heater because Again, it's not as efficient as the permanent magnet motor, puts off a lot more waste heat. And that waste heat, while it's providing some sort of a benefit, could also go to heating the battery, the cabin, uh, whatever else needs to be heated. On that same vein though, and this is just sort of a direct statement to GM, if you are planning to do a cold weather package, and actually I really don't think this even needs to be a cold weather package. I think you should just have something 
within the system that allows the user, the owner, to control or regulate battery temperature. Basically, it would be an advanced setting, but for those of us who know what we're doing, you know, if you're coming into a DC fast charger hot, well, we should be able to precondition the battery and, you know, put the, the battery cooler on overdrive. But the same thing, if we're coming in cold, we should be able to five to 10 minutes out, set a battery heater so that by the time we arrive at the charger, the battery temperature is up to at least 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put a link to Bjorn's video below, but I'd love to hear what you think, what your experiences have been uh, charging in colder weather. Our winters have been fairly mild here in California lately, but it does look like we have a bit of a cold front coming in. So hopefully I can do a little bit more testing in cold weather with the Bolt EV. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.